Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you again for joining me uh, for the upgrade training. This is going to be the pediatric workflow. The updates that will be uh, taking place once we go live October 19th. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of show you what's to come and how the um, upgrade will affect the pediatric workflow. So what's new, what's new that's going to be an intake? Um, with the upgrade, vital signs, the orthostatic vital signs is now going to be uh, able to be utilized. Okay. And so the orthostatic vital signs will be uh, available in the vital signs panel. As you see here, this hyperlink here, if you click the hyperlink, it will open up this orthostatic vital signs template, and you'll be able to document all this information if you need to. Okay. You can now enter any uh, blood pressure information that the patient may give you if they check their BP at home as well. And that will be located here. If you click on the historical information entered, this encounter hyperlink down at the bottom, it will open up this template and you'll be able to record that information if your patient uh, checks our blood pressure at home. What's also new in SOAP is the totally redesigned uh, SOAP template. So it looks completely new. I'm not sure if you've gotten a chance to see it at all, but here are screenshots of how it will look once we go live. So it's gotten a total overhaul. Um, there's now two, so to, so to speak, panels now. Um, they're called cards now. They're not called panels anymore. NextGen has decided to call them cards. So you can do a, a dual card screen uh, view, or you can still do the uh, one you know screen view if you want to scroll up and down, or you can have it side by side. Okay. Also changed um, or updated with the ability to change your font size as well. So you can increase or decrease the font size of your uh, SOAP template. Okay. They've added a navigation bar as well on the right-hand side. If you click the purple little icon here, that will open up the navigation bar, and you'll be able to choose any of these hyperlinks, or if you need to generate a note or access the procedures template or module here, you can do so by clicking the navigation bar icon. Okay. You can also select the well child age for the well child visit as well. Okay, so say if you have a patient that is maybe six months old, but they missed their four month well child check, you can update that age to reflect the four month uh, well child age. Okay. The height, weight, and BMI percentiles now display in the SOAP Vital Signs card located on this uh, screenshot here. So you can see we have the height, the weight, the BMI, and then at the end, you have the percentile display. What's also been added is the AAP Bright Futures 4th Edition content. Okay, and that's based off of the patient's well child age. And that can be found under the anticipatory guidance hyperlink here. Once you click that hyperlink, it will bring you to this template. And you'll be able to change or update the well child age if you need to. But it'll all, all the content will be based off of well child age. Okay, so that's, that's one of the new uh, cool things that is coming with the upgrade is the uh, Bright Futures 4th edition content that will be able to be accessed. SOAP, uh, also My Phrases has been simplified. You can now uh, access the My Phrases in the HPI comment section and still in the a a uh, uh, AP Details, sorry. Okay, so you can still access through here under My Phrases. It's just now one hyperlink. And once you click that hyperlink, it will open up this My Phrase template, and you'll be able to either create your phrases or update if you need to. 
Okay, it's all just one location now. If you want to get a, a glimpse of all of your phrases that you saved or added, you can check out this list all phrase types, and this will give you a list of all of your phrases that you've either created or you can choose from. Okay. Also going to be changing in 2021 is the ENM coding guidelines. So effective January 1st, 2021, HMP and P and E will no longer be used to determine an ENM code. Also with that uh, guideline change, 99201 will be completely eliminated from being used. Okay, so uh, the way that the ENM code is going to be able to um, uh, be submitted is it's going to be based off of time spent with the patient for the day of service. Okay, so with that said, medical decision making and the time uh, spent with the patient will be the two options to determine the ENM code. Okay, uh, the well child ENM codes will remain the same, so that won't change. Um, it's just everything else about the way that you go about uh, submitting your ENM codes is going to, you know, look a little bit different. You still have the ability to calculate the code if you want to manually calculate it and submit. You still have the option to do that as shown here in the screenshot. Question. Yes. Do we need to uh, document the time spent somewhere? Uh, so the time spent, um, it, you will pretty much use it. It'll, it. There's a descriptor here next to the ENM code, and you'll choose the ENM code based off of the amount of time that you spent, um, you know, with the or in the in the visit. So the the code will have the the time um, kind of descriptor next to it. Um, as far as documentation goes for the time spent. Um, so if you see here, total visit time, you'll be able to add that here. Uh, where my mouse is. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The well child office visit workflow Okay, so this is how the workflow is going to be. Um, I believe nothing's changed. So the med, the MA, and the nursing will still initiate the intake um, for the well child or office visit, collect the, the HPI and the reason for visit, the measurements, vitals, all that good stuff will still be completed by the MA and the nursing staff. Provider will still document as normal. Nothing has changed about that workflow. So as you see in the screenshot here, um, this is a dual view panel. So you still have your reason for visit and your history. And then on the right hand side, you have your vitals and your physical exam. So it's really going to be, you know, how you want to uh, have your your viewing preferences set up um, and what your style would be. Personally, I like the dual screen better um, because you can, you know, kind of work on both, you know, both sides if you need to. Um, but and it's just visually, it's a little bit easier for me to uh, to just look at it. But it's totally up to you how you want to, you know, uh, change your 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 panel or your cards. Adding assessments. Uh, this workflow is still going to be the same as we currently have it. Nothing's changed about adding the assessment. You would still need to uh, go into SOAP, go to the assessment tab, look it up in the Problem IT Plus IMO module. And then you know add your your assessment there. My plan still the same workflow. Nothing's changed there. You're still able to order fit test and you know schedule any uh, optometry or retinal photos appointments. AP details uh, still the same workflow. Uh, you still document your impressions based off the assessment here. So nothing's changed there as well. Ordering labs, still the same workflow, nothing's changed. Is it still going to close, oh. close if you click enter rather than search? 
you know, we're working on that. You know, we can only, we, we can only take baby steps here. We, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. I hope so. I hope so. Okay. I know that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the issues everyone wants to to fix. Hopefully, hopefully it will. Let's let's cross our fingers. <laughs> Again, diagnostics still the same workflow. Um, you don't you don't need to you know you, you still need to highlight the assessment and then uh, choose your diagnostic. Tasking attending, um, this is still the same workflow for residents and students. Uh, nothing's changed there either. Referrals still the same workflow. Nothing's changed. And check out is still doing the same workflow as well. You'll still need to generate those documents. Again, um, I mentioned before, finalize the changes are going to be effective January 1st, 2021, and uh, the descriptor will be next to the ENM code, and that will help you um, identify which code that you need to uh, to select. Telemedicine, so for telephone uh, visits and video or auto visits, it's still going to be the same workflow, okay? Uh, 